You're listening to The Starting Zone, a podcast about World of Warcraft and the people who play it. And now, here are your hosts. Well, hello and welcome to The Starting Zone, the podcast about World of Warcraft and people who play it. Today is November 27th, and my name is Spencer Downey. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to our podcast. I am joined today, as always, by my co-host, Jason Lucas. Jason, how are you doing on this fine Wednesday? Hey, Spencer, I remember you. Yeah. Um, it's, been, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been, been a little bit, bit longer than it usually it goes has. before we speak, but uh, yep. we are back. And yes, we're doing a very strange scheduled recording yeah. this week uh, on a Wednesday afternoon, right before a big holiday in the U.S. and yep. everything else. But um, yeah. Hey, the good news is uh, it, on the uh, War Within front, it's been a relatively slow news period since the last time it we has. spoke. We, we kind of recapped the big Warcraft Direct headlines last time we talked. And uh, I think in, a, in large part, in War Within land, we're kind of in a holding pattern waiting for uh, .7 in a few weeks. Which is fine. Um, And, you know, last week we had the big uh, classic fresh launch and all that and all that's going on. And that's cool. I haven't been playing that at all. I might I might step in a little bit this week since I have some extra free time and I kind of just want to take the trip down memory lane. Um, Obviously, a lot of people are living in there, but uh, I won't be doing that. It's cool that it's here. I'm glad they did it. uh, But, you know. I classic is never really my focus and um, even I'm definitely like on the downside of, of stuff that I got to finish up in season one or whatever, but you know, I still have plenty of things I want to do and that's kind of where my wow time is going to go. So, yeah, of course, you know, of course, yeah, no, yeah, I, it's, it's cool that it's over there, but I, I, I made a character just so I could squat on my name, but that's as far as I took it. I didn't even log her in yet. So that's, that's maybe, maybe this week go. we'll get there. Yeah. yeah. That's a smart way to go. Yeah. We last recorded on the 15th, I believe was the last day. And so that meant that it's, it, yeah, it's almost been two weeks. We're at, uh, we're at 12 days since our last recording, and that was because I then traveled all last week. I was uh, down in California visiting Devalor, a.k.a. Josh Allen, a.k.a. Lore, and uh, having a really good time staying over at his place and playing a bunch of games and chatting about things, and it was a really good time. So I, I, I miss out on those opportunities when we don't have a BlizzCon or we don't get invited to things where basically I'm, I'm not traveling down to California, which means I just miss out on all of the friends that I like to see who live in that area. So we had a, a friend's giving, had a bunch of people over and it was a, it was a really good time. So I enjoyed that, but it did mean that our podcast schedule got a little wonky. I'm also currently in the middle of uh, bargaining unit stuff for my local union uh, that I am for my work. And so I, I, I'm on the bargaining committee, which means that I am in meetings every day for nine to fives basically at the, at the moment as we prep for our, our negotiations that we'll be going into. So uh, I, my days are, are crazy. It is like, wake up early, go spend the entire day inside of a meeting discussing very important things and giving opinions on very important things. And then coming home from that and, and being wiped as I'm very introverted when it comes to being exposed to a meeting for that long, it wipes most people. Uh, so we are, we're fitting in the podcast where we can. Uh, and we're going to see how all of this turns out this week. Now, so last week I didn't do a ton of WoW. I was in WoW uh, every day because I was at least doing my profession stuff every day. I did pug into an 11 Dawnbreaker on my main to make sure I got at least one keystone in. So I had a keystone for this week and had a vault reward and that sort of thing. I got a, a one-hander, so a mythic tier one-hander out of that, which is nice because I'll stow that away until I want to spend badges on it and basically making an offhand and then... Uh, leveling up the one-hander so that I have uh, basically the, the best in slot one-hander slash offhand situation that can happen. There's no really good one-handers for a druid. There's just slightly less bad ones, but the extra three item levels are one of those like, hey, this is more intellect and, you know, thus better uh, at situation for damage and whatnot than a 363, than a, uh, sorry, 636 is what I'm going to say, staff that I'm currently using at the moment. So, I also have the offhand off of Ovenax, so I have I have a good offhand if I wanted to use one that I'm not crafting, but I'll probably end up crafting one. I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens as far as what's best for me in in that department. But yeah, profession was basically the main thing I I still did. I will say that me flying around and gathering treasures 
has become a chore on a very large scale with professions. Uh, it takes way too long to get this done. And it's not that I'm having a hard time finding treasures necessarily. It's just the drop rates off of the treasures are just not very good. There are times where I'll spend like 45 minutes on a character just flying around looting treasures to try and get the three profession things that I need for the week. That is an extremely long period of time. It's not so bad when you're out doing world quests and whatnot, and you're sort of coming across them organically, which is I think what the systems were designed around initially. However, now that I'm t ranked 25 renowned with everything, I don't need to be doing the daily quests as often on all of you know the different characters that I'm doing or even on just my main character. So that means that I just don't have a, a need to be flying around the world as often. And I, I wanna spend my time doing something else. And so it's unfortunate that it's like, all right, you know, we've hit a Tuesday reset, log in, do all of the, you know, profession work order stuff that I need to do, turn in the materials that people want for quests, hop on my mount and fly around for two and a half hours on different characters trying to gather all treasures. Like that is not fun. So I, I do think they should look into that. Uh, I'll also say that the catch up mechanics for a lot of the gathering professions needs a lot of work. The... Uh, enchanting is like the gold standard of ketchup for any profession that's out there. Just disenchanting things, you have a very high chance of getting all of the ketchup materials to be able to get all the, the knowledge points to be able to catch your profession up. And it's a, it's a really good experience. So anyone who's like, hey, I want to get a whole bunch of, you know, the, the crafting profession materials so that I can uh, make profession equipment and other gear that I might need. Enchanting is your way to go. Just pick up enchanting buy up a whole bunch of blues off the auction house and disenchant away and you will just gain so many knowledge points, which will get you so much currency that you'll be able to buy anything you want to buy on that character at that point, which is great. It's weird that I can go out as a skinner and skin like 80 animals and get one catch-up bonus in that situation. And you're like, okay, guys, like crank up the dials. Let's get this stuff tuned in, please, because I don't want to have to skin... 12,000 things in order to catch up on the, you know, knowledge points that I'm missing from skinning. I think that's very unreasonable. So I, I do think that they could work on that for a lot of those professions uh, and that would help out a lot. But outside of that, my raid team was in raiding. They were working on court still and it sounds like they got it to about 40% or 38% or something like that. So they had a very good prog week. Uh, I didn't get to witness very much of it. So I'm hopeful that uh, when I get in this weekend, because it sounds like I'm going to be needed for this weekend, that uh, I'm able to, to catch up and stay on track and do everything. They're going to have me in healing. I was DPSing before, so the last time I saw the fight, and apparently they've changed a lot of things, and they're much happier with what they've changed. So I have a lot of catching up to do, and that's what I'll be spending my evening free time with, I think, for a little while this week is just watching VODs, going through our logs, going through, you know, the strat videos that people have posted and really trying to figure out, I know the raid leaders already said, Hey, I'd, I'm, you know, I'd, I'd like to sit down with you and just have a conversation about the stuff we changed to sort of help catch you up quickly. So I'll be doing that at some point this week, just to make sure that I'm not walking in as blind and uncomfortable as I, you know, can. That's, there's nothing worse than being like, I'm coming in late to prog on a boss and I don't feel ready. You never want to not feel ready walking, <laughs> walking into that because you just feel uncomfortable. And it's, you know, you're, you already are going to have the, hey, how do I do all the things that I've watched in my head and thought about in my head while also pushing all the buttons I need to push, uh, which is the, the trickiest part because your brain also has to think about, hey, I want to push buttons a certain way on top of remembering to do things. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to Prague this week. That'll be fun. That'll be Sunday, Monday. And hopefully we get court down. That would be wonderful. Because then we can move on to Queen, and Queen is currently easier than Court, because Queen's gotten more attention to nerfs than Court. So we'll just see how they go. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, you have yeah. that. You have that like added pressure too, where it's like if the team's been progging and you haven't been in for all the pulls, you know, you got to kind of learn faster than the rest of the group in some ways. So yeah, yeah, that's the. Yeah, unfortunately, I've had to put some people in that position myself with some mythic fights because it's like I don't have the same twenty people or like you know twenty plus four or five people on the bench thing. It's like. I grab who I can grab. And sometimes that means we're on a farm boss and people have no pulls on it. It's like, yeah. well, it's took, this took us 30 pulls. You got to learn it in two or we're going to start getting frustrated. It's yeah. not really fair, but it's just human nature, I guess. Well, this particular individual too would have been responsible. I I, I believe because they were a, a evoker 
for some of the webbing of the bosses too. And you need three, you need to cross the, uh, the beetle bugs pass, uh, path when he charges with three different webs in order to stun him inside mythic. And so I did that in phase one while the two evokers were doing their thing. Uh, and so now that I'm basically stepping in for one of the evokers who I think's internet is just toast at the moment, um, which is very unfortunate. Uh, I will have to figure out that role and what that looks like and how that's going to work. So yeah, we'll get that all sorted for it. But yes, if there's that added level of pressure of not wanting to be, I'm going to get a certain amount of pulls. Like everyone's going to expect like, all right, it's going to take tree, like at least some pulls to figure out exactly what this rhythm is. But I like to walk in and just be ready for that. So we'll, uh, we'll see how I do with all my prep and things like that. But what did you get up to this past week in WoW? Oh man, it's basically been two weeks of WoW, really, since yeah. uh, we last yeah. spoke. Um, you know, raid schedule continues apace. Um, the heroic reclears are getting uh, somewhat absurd at this point, as the you know the the most diehard raiders on the team start getting up around six thirty five item level or higher, and now we're up to nine percent on the zone wide uh, raid buff, right? If you're all the yeah. way caught up this week, um, this week pushed that over oh, for those who are worried about getting enough of those tokens. If you've been doing it regularly on your main, just take an alt into LFR. You'll get six per boss. It's really nice. You have a catch you get a whole up bunch is, of them. Yeah. It's the, the catch up mechanics. Very good. Same thing with, if you have any alts at all, if you want to just like, be like, Hey, I'm going on vacation for a week. Like I did. Then you can just take an alt in to a normal run or into a, you know, into an LFR and, each boss kill will just, you'll get so many tokens that you'll, you'll be like, I have two weeks saved up. I'm good. That's really nice. I right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. You just turn, and then you can just transfer them. They're a war band and then you can just turn them in. So, um, yeah, the 9%, man. I mean, we are now at the point where like we're hard phasing queen before she even puts down the third set of poison circles and then killing her like in phase three, basically right after the portal cast goes out so yeah yeah that makes um sense. yeah just like really really fast uh, last night uh it was like 75 minutes from raid start to heroic full clear which is just it's a little wacky uh not that i'm complaining um uh last no two weeks ago like right i guess it was like right after we recorded the last episode we were still working on um mythic Roshanon. We ended up getting that uh, that weekend, that Sunday, two weeks ago. So we now have two Rashidon kills under our belt, which is pretty cool. And um, we, we have started to look at Princess a little bit. We got a handful of pulls in on it last week. Um, you know, it's it's a much more complicated fight than the first four. And it's it, there's a lot of repetition and learning. Everybody needs to be able to just react to what's happening instead of thinking about what they're supposed to do. So, you know, we have, we have a ways to go, but... Yeah. As long as we can keep getting pulls on it, then I think that's that's the main thing. And the roster's been pretty healthy. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. At this point, I'm, you know, if we are farming four of eight mythic on a weekly basis, everybody's getting all those gilded crests and they're getting two mythic choices out of their raid yeah. slot. And Plus, Seekron and Rashidon have really good loot yep, too. That neck so. is really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The neck and the cloak, the cloak and there's yeah. some set tokens from them. And, you know, not everybody on my team does keystones the way that, you know, I do or that some other people on the team do. So yeah. it's a great source for upgrade currency and all that. Like, I, as far as I'm concerned, we're like done with Prague, but I'm not going to stop looking at bosses as long as people keep showing up, you know? So it's a, it's a cool place to be in. It's not really a place that our team has been in like ever, even in Amir Drasil, like we got four of nine or however many bosses were in there and we only killed that council boss one time. And then I couldn't get attendance back up to even reclear right. it ever again. Um, and we're in a, we're just in a different spot right now, which is cool. And um, yeah, having a good time. I was going to cancel raid tonight because it is Thanksgiving Eve in the US and it's a big yeah. travel day, a lot of prep and, you know, just people are very busy. So I didn't want to put any pressure on anybody to show up. And then I had like 23 signups <laughs> when the calendar event, the, we have like an automated calendar event, a discord yep. that goes up. And I was like, do you guys want to play on Wednesday? And they're like, yeah, we, we'll, we could play. I mean. First of all, I do play with a bunch of Canadians, mm -hmm. so they're all mm -hmm. in for yeah, it anyway. Fine. And it's yep. like, okay, like we got that situated. Yep. And then it's like, yeah, we actually have a mythic squad. So last night, after full clear, we still had 45 minutes raid left. And I'm like, okay, as we've been raiding, I've been putting together the mythic comp for the week. It's all people that are in here right now. 
let's just cut it down to 20 and we'll start up. So we yeah. got Olgrax and a Bloodbound Horror last night as well, like 10 bosses and two hours flat. We even got a pull in on Seeker and we didn't kill it, but you know, just a super productive raid night. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, yeah, so raid's going great. I'm having a, a really good time in there. I, I'm a little concerned that it's going to be actually too silly by the end of the season. Like once we get up to like 18%, on the, it's like, what are we even doing in here? But Hey, whatever. I mean, I, I think at that point, you know, maybe we cut to two it's, nights a week or whatever. I, yeah. I think it's fine to, to, you know, ramp it down at the end of the season. So I, I, I like the idea that there's teams like yours that would then be able to more so brute force or at least shorten encounters like Ovenax and be able to potentially get Ovenax down on Mythic because you wouldn't even see the third set of eggs. You just do the first two sections. You only have to really learn and maintain for those first two sections. Maybe you lose a couple of people that's not a wipe anymore because you just have the damage to be able to sustain and do the things you need to do. Like, I like the idea that that could be the case with some of these yeah. bosses. Um, I also like that it's a catch-up mechanic for folks that might be wanting to switch characters to a different, play a different class inside the next season. They might be looking mm -hmm. at gearing up an alt in a different way. Those sorts of things then become a lot easier. And for the, the teams that are farming it, like, you know, my team, for example, would be farming it by that point for sure. Would we... we be in a situation where, yeah, we can cut down the amount of nights a week that we raid. So we're down to like a one night just in there, kill specific bosses kind of clear. Like that sounds great to me where we yeah. can get people, you know, in and out and, and have a good time. And then they have a little bit more free time before we kick it off again with more prog. And I, I like that downtime. I like that farm time. So, you know, in general, like as much as it might start to get a little bit silly if for some teams that are, you know, used to killing these bosses, I think that it's going to be a very healthy thing for the game. Yeah, I, I do think it's it's something they should maybe... I, I hope they consider continuing this into Season 2 and maybe refining it a bit or something. Yeah. But, like, it is a light at the end of the tunnel in some ways if there's a boss that you're trying to prog on and it's like, what are you really going to get, you know, this far into the season right. across the raid team in terms of item upgrades that's going to be 2% damage and healing and absorbs and all that? Like, yeah. Nothing, there's no item level that exists that's going to do that once you get some, you know, most of the raid is above 630 or whatever. So it is that kind of, you know, it's it it's this, uh, it's this beacon of hope, right? That like you can get over that throughput hump or whatever, or, you know, that thing that you just can't survive. Well, you know, now you can because right. of, you know, the, the buff stacking up. So that's really cool. I, I like it. And I think it will probably lead to us doing Mythic more consistently and longer than we have done in previous tiers. And even right. if that doesn't mean any more prog from here, it may or may not. But even if it doesn't, just motivating people to like, yeah, whatever, I'll hop on. I'll, I'll do the farm bosses. I'll get my buff stack for the week or whatever. Like, yeah. that's awesome. I think it's a huge win. And yeah, it's, it's, it's great for alts because you're not as much of a liability because yeah. you have that extra, you know, you, you, you have a huge buff on you already. And then the people that are on mains are just like, I, I mean, this stuff is just every boss is like sub three minutes or something. So it's, you know, I, I think one, it feels like you've earned it, right? Because you yeah. did it for a month or whatever it was without it. And you had to learn all the bosses and do it the hard way. And then it just kind of rewards you for sticking with it. So I think it's a cool system. Yeah, I, I just think in general, it's, it is what we, we talk about the Lich King one all the time. And it, it's one of the ones to me that I just, I think is the best system we've had for making, nerfing the raid progressively. It's just a nice way to do it of let's just make characters stronger and stronger and stronger and let them scale a little bit out of control towards the end of it. And it'll feel mm -hmm. really good. You know, and, and Corruption had its own thing that sort of did that to a certain degree back inside yeah, BFA. Yeah, it was but, similar, yeah. Uh, it, it was also a little bit more dependent on getting the right pieces and having the right, you know, affixes on your gear and that kind of thing to be able to do what you want to do. Or in this case, it's just you yeah. don't have to do anything. You just keep showing up each week. And, yeah, you just kill you know, raid bosses, yeah, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the thing about Corruption is you had this other system you had to engage in very consistently in order yeah. to really ramp it up. And this is just like go in and kill bosses and every other week you get that much stronger. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, so that was Raid. Uh, Keystones, you know, just been keeping that consistent, trying to get full vaults every week. I did pass 2,700 rating last week. Nice. I got all 11s in time now, except for Stone Vault. Just haven't been able to crack that one. But um, kind of switched up some of the some of the the Keystone buddies because um, had to switch a healer out. Um, and one of my one of the guys I run the most consistently with when he's around, he's been he's been out for you know personal reasons for a few weeks, and he's not going to be back for a while. So 
getting some people some uh, portals they didn't have, which is cool. Like um, my Prez Evoker buddy, he has kind of missed out on on some stuff, just hasn't quite had the reps yet this season. So we've been putting him through his paces and nice. we're starting to knock those portals out for him. So yeah, Diff- different, really different fun. kind of healer for sure. Definitely requires yeah. some positioning, you know, learning that can take place, which is cool. Yeah. And the, the team kind of needs to recognize it too, right? Like yeah. the, you, you have to be aware of kind of the limitation, but like how you can really benefit from it. Um, it's just, you, you just have to, you know, just be a little bit more aware than you would with maybe a different healer spec, but yeah. 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 It's going pretty well. I, I gotta say like, man, these Zaltath affixes are just, I don't, I really don't love them. Like we had the <laughs> orbs last week and yeah. like, man, it's see, like on paper, it doesn't seem bad, but it's so disruptive in the moment. And it seems to always pop at like the worst times on boss fights. Like I, I just, this week's isn't too bad. We'll talk about it a bit, a bit yeah. more in, in yeah. a minute, but uh, this week's is, is actually feeling better as the weeks go on. But yeah, last week we just had some stupid stuff happen where it's like, you know, second boss and miss a tier scythe, pretty easy dungeon overall, but Okay, you have the the Vulpin go out, and then you have guessing game go out, and now the orbs are everywhere. And so, what do you, you know? How much stuff can you really pay attention to at any one time? And I think with some of these affixes, the noise pushes it over the edge into a thing that the team can't pay attention to. So yeah. I don't really, you yeah. know, I don't know. I'm just feeling that a bit, but just staying on track. I mean, I got three keys in last night and I think people are going to be around for keys tonight. So even on like a weird holiday week, potentially a short week, I should still have my vault maxed out. And, um, dude, last week I got a myth track sack brood out of the vault. So I got that maxed nice. out. That's a very nice trinket for me this week. I got a neck, which is like dungeon biz. It's not the secret neck, but I had a delve hero neck. So I bumping that up to myth track was nice. I'm, almost done with gearing at least in terms of being full myth track i got three slots left that i'm waiting on that aren't yeah. you know six of six myth or crafted so that's really not bad uh you know my i'm i'm like 635 equipped so my character is just like really at the top of that power curve which feels awesome um and beyond that uh, you know i've been like I, I think i mentioned last week or the week before when we talked like I'm starting to kind of hit that mid season point where my, my play time's ramping down a bit, but I am still doing four delves a week on the monk and druid. My goal with them is to get all hero track, but like, man, the, the vaults, when all you're doing is delves, the vault can be really frustrating because that delve row, there are so many trinkets in that pool. And I feel like every week I'm just being presented with trinkets. I don't really want or cloaks. And it's like, man, can I just fill in these last couple spots so this tune can be like, quote unquote, done for the season, you know, right. and she's not cooperating. So this week I did get a, a hero track weapon on the Druid. That felt pretty good. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. And that's just how it goes with random loot in general. But, um, you know, I, I don't know. I My thought is like, well, once these guys are done with hero track, then I'll rotate in the Paladin or something and just play something different. But. I just keep getting offered trinkets, you know, so whatever. I mean, today was monk day. I already got my monk's delves done for the week, so I'll squeeze a druid in at some point, probably not on Thanksgiving, but uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. And then, I, you know, once a day I hop in on my DK and do a trivia question, and that's pretty much the extent of uh, alt play these days. But it's nice. I don't feel, you know, I feel like I can do everything I want to do on an alt if all I'm doing is delves in about two hours between right. getting the keys doing the loop for the keys and doing the delve so i feel like that's pretty reasonable for the chance at like a decent hero track item like um it's it's obnoxious when you get garbage items in the vault that you don't want but you know overall i, I think it's a big improvement from where we've been where it's like well if you're not raiding or doing high keys in this tune like you're just not gonna get any power ever you have nothing you know right. so and i don't want to do that on these tunes i never did it and i don't want to and doing this stuff, it's like, well, it may not be my favorite thing in the world. It may not be like super time efficient for gearing up to hero track when I could be doing keys, but I could do it at my own pace. I could do it the way I want to do it. And hey, man, I got almost the full mog set for the hero track monk set for, for this tier. You know, I'm just missing one piece and I, all that stuff feels really cool just to collect it and just kind of watch it stack up. So, uh, you know, I've been enjoying it. Good. Yeah, I... I still have a little ways to go with getting all my mythic pieces. I think, I think I got pants last week, and then I got gloves the week before, and I'm currently using a crafted set of gloves, so I need to swap that out to a. I have a mythic track belt, but all the belts are really bad for druid, 
so I need to swap that out with a crafted piece most likely, which will then save me some tokens on upgrading that piece in that slot. There's a, a bunch of things I need to do to sort of work things around, but I think in the end, I'm probably like you, I'm probably three pieces or so away from having everything myth track. Uh, trinkets being something where I have myth track trinkets, but I'm not using all myth track trinkets. I'm still using the heroic um, caster trinket off court, and I'm still using the the uh, spy masters. I'm still using a heroic trinket out of uh, out of doing the, the mythic plus dungeons. So I haven't gotten any mythic. I haven't gotten any mythic plus trinkets out of vault. I haven't gotten any of them. So that's something that still would be a nice bump here or there. So we'll see how that goes. All right, let's hop into what's going on this week in World of Warcraft. All right, this week is the Wrath of the Lich King time walking event, meaning the sign of the Scourge buff is up, increasing reputation gains from combat and quests for Wrath of the Lich King reputations by 50%. And there's a quest for level 10 and above characters that they can queue for time walking versions of Wrath of the Lich King dungeons for Azul Narub, Gundrak, Halls of Lightning, Forge of Souls, the Nexus, and Utgard Keep. We also have a quest to complete five of these, which allows you to get a cache of normal Nerobar Palace gear. And the dungeons themselves drop 554 eye level gear and the vendors sell in some 541 eye level gear. But there is Ulduar time walking. If you're someone who wants to get yourself some 597, some of that adventurer track gear, you can by just going out and doing, uh, actually that's this champion, it's champion track gear, sorry is what I'm gonna say. Some champion track gear, uh, you can just go out and queue up for the Ulduar time walking, get out there for max level characters and get yourself some achievements if you're still looking for some of those. You can get yourself some loot, hopefully, and if you pick up the quest before you go and do it, which you have to go to the uh, Northrend version of Dalaran to get, then you can get yourself some 610 eye level Wrath of the Lich King raid loot. So that could be anything from any of the Wrath of Wrath of the Lich King dungeons at 610 eye level. So be sure you are picking that up as well before you hop in and do it. Either way, more time walking has come. And it lines up nicely with Pilgrim's Bounty buff, which means that you can get yourself some extra reputation gain on top of the anniversary event while leveling characters up in time walking, if that's something you want to do. Yeah, um, pretty cool time walking event. I mean, these are some really good dungeons and generally fast runs. Um, I want to point out uh, one thing. They changed the portal in the portal room. The, now it just straight up goes to Dalaran. Like it, they changed it at one point and it used to go to like the the ground in Crystal Song Forest and you have to fly up to Dalaran. Oh. Uh, I don't know when they changed it, but I went out there today and I was like, oh, this actually just takes me right in the city. Wonderful. Um, also, there is new stuff on the time walking vendor cosmetics uh, by stuff is what I mean. Yes. Um, so they all got a refresh and this is the first time I think we've seen Wrath since the refresh. So there's like a new magic carpet mount that's pretty cool. There's a new uh, wolf pet. There's all kinds of new um, transmog ensembles. I believe they are, I want to say it's, uh, I forget which season it is, but it, I, I think they're PVP recolors of, of the, uh, the various armor types. So that's on there. There's all kinds of uh, recolors and, and I, probably some new models too of weapons and all that stuff. Uh, just thousands and thousands and thousands of badges worth of new stuff on that vendor. So keep that in mind that the, the, that is there if you're, interested i've been converting all of my bronze into uh time time war badges now because i got i bought out all the bronze celebration yep. stuff yep. and i'm still doing all my weeklies so you know that's a few thousand extra badges a week just from doing yep. that um it's not nowhere near enough to cover all this new stuff on the vendors but hey you know what uh, it's been a long time since we got a time walking refresh and um this keeps the events feeling a bit more vital for for a, a while to come you know because yeah. there's, there's going to be stuff for people to buy um Old War Time Walking is kind of a cool option, uh, although I, what I would say is probably check the group finder for people that are running groups that are just at Yogg, and you can just queue it and do Yogg. If all it, you have if to all do you for want the raid quest. Yeah, if if yeah, all you like, want is the 610, then that's that's definitely a way to go. But, yeah, that's all you got to do for the quest is defeat Yogg. So, yeah. um, if you're, you know, if that, you're trying to complete the kill five bosses or complete five time walkings you can do a full clear if that's something you're looking to do because you will get that other quest complete too for the normal gear 
Yeah, like I don't. Uh, I mean, pugging it might be a little dicey. Old War is not that complicated, but there is some stuff that even for time walking right is like, okay, here we go. <laughs> you know, like just the vehicle fight in the beginning and people knowing like where to go and what to do. So just bear that in mind. But yeah, yeah I mean, a, a pretty good thing to do on the alt stable is try to find a you know an ID at Yog and yeah. just hop in there and get your stuff. So that's certainly an option. Um, yeah, a pretty a pretty cool event. It's and it's just um, it might be tough timing for for Americans with the holiday and everything. You know, people are going to be busy traveling and, and doing you know that kind of stuff. Um, I I will probably not get in here at all. Honestly, maybe I'll do some some of the dungeons on some characters, but I won't, I don't think I'll be doing old war. Yeah, it's fair enough. Def, almost certainly not with the raid team. You know, if we can reconvene on Sunday, we'll probably be doing mythic. I think so. But it's a really good option for like normal teams. If if heroic is like n- not really your speed and you're kind of bored with normal palace, like keep in mind this is out there this week and maybe, you know, grab some people and run through Old War. It's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We also, of course, have the Titan Disc Fragments back up this week since we're on our three week rotation, as we have now confirmed and figured out. I mean, you need to collect a hundred fragments from rares, treasures, and dungeon bosses. Remember, you can get 50 of these from killing the world boss as long as you're not inside of a raid group when you kill the world boss so if you see the world boss being attacked and you have this quest already hop in there and knock that boss out you'll get 50 of them which is a great way to sort of jump ahead otherwise you can do you know follower dungeons you can do delves you can do normal dungeons whatever it is you're looking to do well you'll chop through these pretty quick you can just gather them from treasures out in the world although that's a bit of a slower pace but you have three weeks to finish this quest. This quest will remain relevant and remain in your log for three weeks until the next one rolls around. So there's also not like a massive rush to get this done right away unless you're looking to craft something soon because you get your spark from this quest. So you want to be sure that you're getting that spark fragment to uh, to be able to start doing all the different crafting that you might want to do with that sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah, delves are actually great for this um, because it, uh, a tier eight, uh, you know, bountiful delve. I don't, I don't know if it if it ranks up with difficulty because all I really do is tier up tier eight bountifuls, but it's like thirty four fragments from one of them. So doing my alt loop, I'm gonna do my four delves. Hey, guess what? I did the weekly for free because I was already doing this. So right. that's that's pretty cool. And um, I mean, just to get a little ahead of ourselves, the world boss is the one in Isle of Dorne this week, which is usually pretty active and easy to get to. So yeah, yeah. you could definitely like camp out there and just tag it when, when other people are doing it and get your 50 fragments just from that. That's, yeah. that's what I did. Which is I, nice. I cruised by it and I was like, well, there's nobody here right now. Let me go polish off some of these world quests and I'll come back. And then I came back and people were fighting it and yep. I tagged it up and I got my hundred or my 50 fragments and I went about my business. Yeah, no, it's a, it's definitely a good way to do it for sure. Uh, I will also say that uh, when it comes to the the special assignment quests, you still want to be doing those for that bronze this week. And that you reminded me because Isle of Dorn is where the the bees is, are currently up. They're the ones you have to the cinder bees you have to go out and kill, which is where I was doing a lot of my skinning because people are killing cinder bees and they're great to skin. And then you'd skin fifty or sixty of them and not get anything and be like, why is my ketchup mechanic not here? Um, so yeah, that's the uh, that's that's the that's the fun part about skinning. Anyways. We'll bump down, since we talked already about World Boss, into Deep Wind Dunk. That is the PvP role for the week, where you are going to Deep Wind Gorge, and your goal is to pick up the ball from either the northern or southern mines and take them to your enemy's ba- take them to, uh, to the enemy's base and then dunk on their net to try and get yourself some points. This will get you some Marks of Honor, Conquest, and Honor for a win from the Something Different quest. It'll also get you, because it's the Brawl, and we have the Anniversary Ant going on some Bronze, so if you're looking for some more bronze, it's a good way to get that as well. And yeah, this is just a better version of Deep Wind Dunk when it comes to this kind of stuff, or Deep Wind Gorge, should I say? Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. It's it is uh, in, in terms of like the you know there's like the wacky brawls, and then there's the brawls that aren't wacky enough, and then there's the ones that are like this is a different set of rules. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a pretty good one. Um, although actually, it occurs to me this was already up. The, the uh, the brawl this week is actually Shadow Pan Showdown. I'm sorry. All right, well that's um, fine. So Shadow Pan Showdown is one where you face off against the opposite team inside of the Shadow Pan Arena with the giant robots that then fight each other. So basically, you have an NPC robot and they have an NPC robot, and we just like clash those robots together, and you're healing your robot and damaging their robot, and you're damaging their players, and their players are trying to take down your players, and 
it's a cool PvE VP situation that happens, and a lot of players enjoy that one. That's one of my favorite brawls. It's just a really neat spin on a brawl, and it reminded me a lot of like Heroes of the Storm, where they actually had a game mode where you pushed a big robot down, you know, a laneway, yeah. and the robots would fight each other, and it was it was very cool. So it it, just, it always harkens back to that for me. So I I just think it's a neat thing to include in WoW, and it's a fun a fun brawl too. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's cool. It's a cool twist on on like a. It's not like a strictly PvP mode, so that's that is pretty cool about it. And I always mention this. I I feel like when it comes around, but I'm surprised they haven't done anything more in this space on like yeah. a more consistent basis. You know, it's like once every twelve weeks we have a a game mode like this that you can play for a few days. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it seems like there's some opportunity there to maybe do more with that concept because it is pretty cool. Uh, but maybe it's only cool because it's different so and rare rare maybe. right yeah. yeah maybe could be it, it could be I, I i do feel like the uh comp stomp could just live in the game on a regular basis and people would play the crap out yeah. of it and enjoy it i'm just saying a way to kind of yeah. like training wheels for kind of a, a battleground yeah. you know yeah. just kind of get the feel of like okay this is what happens this is the timing this is what stuff looks like this is yeah. what the ui looks like or what you know the the sounds the the call outs yeah. and stuff like that just you know kind of ease people into and you know maybe that's all they want to do like again like here's the storm like just i know people who only ever played versus ai right yep. and that's oh yeah there's the, nothing the, wrong the, with that like a huge portion of the player base yeah only played against ai yeah yeah that's cool so like i yeah i feel like something like that could live alongside the regular you know bg's queue or whatever and just give people a different outlet for it or kind of a way to ease into playing against actual players yeah exactly Okay, Mythic Plus affixes for the week. We got Voidbound. This is the Void Emissary that spawns while players are in combat. It has a big old shield on it and very little health. And basically any mob that gets buffed by this takes reduced damage. So the longer this thing is up, the less damage all the enemies around it that you're in combat with take. But when you do kill it, it gives you 20% versatility and 30% cooldown reduction for 30 seconds. By far the best of the buffs that you can get out of any of these emissary things that you can have happen. 20% verse is not just a huge damage increase statically across the board for all of your party. It's also a large damage reduction, which is very noticeable, especially on the higher keys. So if you're doing like 11s and you get this and you're on a boss that does large AOE damage to your group, you will notice when you have this buff on that AOE versus when you don't have this buff on that AOE, that 20% verse is massive. The 30% cooldown reduction I think is also really nice. The biggest spot that I find it helps with a lot is dispels. Those healers shaving those three or four seconds off of how long it is on your dispel timer. Same thing with interrupts. Shaving those seconds off of how long it is for someone's interrupt before it's off cooldown just makes the dungeons feel better. So this to me is one of my favorite affixes. If you are an evoker, be sure you have your damage against shielded targets ability on your in your talents because you can definitely spec into that where you basically just shatter shields a lot harder you hit them really hard that's one that you can pick up for this week you can also have the uh the monks out there use touch of death on these things because they have very little health to begin with so that's another great way to sort of chew through these fast but man it is uh it is my favorite affix by far it's also the easiest one to deal with because this is a mob that spawns it's one health bar and frame it's not like 12 that spawns near the pack that you're fighting that you just have to throw some damage into and get rid of. And then suddenly you have this big buff and it feels really good. And I have never had an issue with it spawning like out in the middle of nowhere and no one can reach it and it's way over there. And like, I've never had that. The worst thing that can happen with Voidbound that I've found is if your team is struggling on a boss and a couple people have died, they can struggle to break the shield which then means that all the stuff that you're fighting around it is getting such a large damage reduction, it really slows things down. So that's that's the one thing I found that can happen with it. But again, I feel like that's a punishment I'm kind of okay with given the, oh, fact that you died a bunch of, like a bunch of people died to cause that to have happen. So it is kind of like it, it punishes you harder if someone dies, but I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. I, I like this Apex. It's my favorite one of, of the group that we have. I still think a lot of the stuff could use some reworking, but I'm I'm happy it's a void bound week. It'll be a great week to run a bunch of keys. 
Yeah, I can't disagree. I mean, like the first week that we had this, I was like, man, this is this is kind of hard to deal with. It's it is disruptive because it pops and it's like on a boss fight and it's a really bad time because we need to like DPS the shield off of the boss, but instead we yeah. gotta kill this yeah. thing first because now the boss the shield is taking even less damage, or it, it, it shows up when the boss spawns adds. Um, all that stuff is true, but I feel like our damage overall is eclipsing how the void bound emissary like scales up with keystone rank like i was doing some 10s and 11s last night and one run i was running with a, a wind walker and so we just had like touch of death available for basically everyone the chunks like half the shield off right away and off you go and then you know even without that we were dpsing it down pretty quickly um you know i, I had a ret paladin in and um you can uh you know, you can, all, all your executes and stuff can go. So like, I'll execute the thing if I can spare the rage, whatever. Everybody can just dump all their stuff, you know, into it and blow it up quick and then benefit. So I think people are kind of learning sort of, you know, how to counterplay it. And yeah, the buff is so incredibly powerful. It, I, it's probably the most like palpable of the of the four buffs. Oh, you notice um, it for sure. Like it, yeah. If, if you ran an 11 last week and then you ran the same 11 this week, you'll be like, wow, how did we time that three minutes faster? And it's like, well, this is how the, the buff right. is massive. Yeah. 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 It really feels good. And and it's, it, it's a huge, it's a huge difference defensively. I mean, you mentioned that, but I, yeah. I do feel like, you know, that's the underrated part of it is everybody's just so much sturdier for those 30 seconds with the buff up and, and things spawns, what, every 90 seconds or something. It's every so minute. It's like a, so it's, it's, it, yeah. it links it's like, with the yeah. cooldown for touch of death. Every minute touch of death is yeah. up and every minute this thing spawns. It's great, yeah, which means so it's basically like half the time, yeah, half you have the time buff in combat, yeah, yeah more or less. Uh, you know, you got to subtract the time that you're killing the thing, but other than that, uh, and also like you mentioned about the position on the spawns, like the thing yeah. has a threat table, so yeah. you just taunt it, and then it just sits at the tank, and it's already in the stack of whatever you're killing. Yep, it takes AOE and cleave damage, so I mean, you should target and blow it up, and then benefit, but like sometimes. For example, I can't do that as the tank, right? Like I was doing some Grim Batol last night and Grim Batol's got some pretty big pulls, man. And there's some real key interrupts and stuff you need to hit in there. So I'm not pulling my target off onto the emissary because I'm watching my interrupt or I'm, you know, loading up a stun or whatever. And it's fine because I can still splash damage onto the thing and, you know, and help chunk it down. And then, you know, yeah, you get that massive, uh, you know, offensive and defensive buff it's it's pretty nice so this one has kind of climbed the ladder for me at first you know this one and the one that we'll have next week um uh, uh whatever it's called um uh devour with the you know the the absorb you got to get off yourself yeah. or um like those were my least two favorite the first rotation but now it's like actually now that i we know what to do with them these are the good ones and the other ones that put all the crap all over the battlefield are the bad ones so yeah yeah the, the that's kind of how i'm feeling about it at this point the heart yeah the hardest part with devour is just dealing with using dispels to remove devour while at the same time needing dispels to remove debuffs that are natural to those dungeons that can wipe your rain. Right. So yeah. The, and then, you know, yeah. a lot of times you can pre-plan your way out of that, Absolutely. you know, um, yeah. and, and Absolutely. people can take different talent builds or whatever. Yeah. Like I can, I can remove devour from myself every other time. That feels great. Go. So yeah. that is, th those two have climbed the ladder for me in terms of preference. Um, Oblivion, I think is actually my least favorite at this yeah. point with the crystals and ascendance. Okay. But kind of obnoxious for what you get. Um, but yeah. yeah, void bound, I don't know void bound was feeling great to me last night. You know, I, the, the ad was dying pretty fast and the, the, the benefits from the buff were, were really noticeable. So yeah, well, it's a good week out there. Well, while we're talking about mythic plus here for a moment, the MDI big grand finals was this past weekend. And I, I did catch some of that. And it, you mentioned Grim Batol and this, this flashed me to it. There was groups that were doing Grim Batol polls where they basically had their tank, at the very beginning, run and grab as much trash as it could before the first boss, alcove line of sight it so that it all pulled back into an alcove while the whole team jumped on dragons and then just pelted that giant pack of mobs with dragons. And I was like, that's really cool. That was really cool to watch. I'm glad they did it because it was neat to, to see like, you know, a way to essentially take advantage of that dragon mechanic in a very severe way to ensure that they were able to get through it. So you congrats to the teams that competed and those that won and whatnot in the MDI this past weekend. It was 
it was fun to watch some of your strats that you have out there. I still think that there's a very defined meta, and that's a little bit gross when you're wanting to like see your class played or a spec that you know or something un underrepresented played. I, I also, and I'll say this, and this is something I had a, a good chat actually with uh, with Josh about, was I don't understand the format for Mythic Plus. Why is it they aren't doing this in heats? It doesn't make sense to me to head to head teams and have teams eliminate teams when uh -huh. <laughs> like one team, like in, in a head to head, you'll have both teams come in under 13 minutes and another head to head, you'll have both teams come in above 13 minutes but there's a winner from both of those and those winners move on. The losers don't. And you're like, why isn't yep. the MDI done in heats where you literally have everyone competes and then the top people who had the best times are the ones who move on the way we do every, you know, race <laughs> that exists that's out there. So yep. I'm just putting that I out mean, there format wise. That's That's been one of my complaints oh about my the standard MDI format since I don't even know when. So yeah. it's basically when they really started doing it, you know, um, it's why I prefer the great push as a concept in general. Yep. Um, I think it's just a more interesting way to sort of have competitive dungeon running, right? Yeah. Who can do the most dungeons the highest successfully? That To me, that's cooler than who can do this plus 12 the fastest. Well, it's not um, even do it the fastest. And, it's, it's who can be yeah. who, who can do it the fastest in a pairing duel. In, in this bracket, in like, like can you do it faster yeah. than them? And can then, then can you do it faster than them? Yeah, it's, yeah, I don't... I mean, it might just be structured that way because it's easier to broadcast. It's not, um, though. I'm just, I'm just like, putting it out there. Side-by-side side broadcasting Mythic Plus looks worse and is harder to follow than following one team going through mythic plus it's yeah. also harder to cast i mean i, mean, I agree yeah. yeah like i don't know i could see them trying to do like we're gonna have like eight inlaid windows and we're gonna like i don't know there's something just weird about the the typical mdi structure that has just it hasn't worked for me over the years i yeah. think the great push is just better really they should just only do the great push in my opinion but right. uh because it's it's a I think it's a more of an opportunity for skill expression, honestly, because you have to try to do something that maybe nobody else is doing, not just True. do, not just refine something down slightly better than somebody else. Yeah. You have yeah. to innovate, you know, cause you, you want to try to do the, the highest thing you can do or whatever, which is where you see the non meta comps come out, which I think yeah. is really interesting, right? Yeah, the little pocket picks cause you yeah. have a strap for this thing. Exactly. Or whatever. Like that, that's why to me, great push is super interesting and fun. And the standard foot race MDI format is like, I'll throw it on as background noise if I'm not, you know, doing anything else, yeah. you know, but I, I might actually sit down and watch Great Push sometimes when it comes around. So yeah. I don't know. It's been that way for years now. Something for them to look at. Okay. Pilgrim's Bounty has kicked off. Well, it does kick off. I guess, it, yeah, it has kicked off. It's live until December 1st. So you got yourself a few more days. You got until, what is that, Monday next week? Uh, Sunday. Sunday this week. You got till this Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday to finish off your Pilgrim's Bounty. And you can get yourself some Pilgrim's Attire if that's what you're looking for. Your silver-plated turkey shooter is out there, hopefully for some people who may be able to get that toy. It is an awesome toy, so definitely put in the effort to try and get it. Of course, you can do your holiday meta achievement stuff that you need to get done. You get yourself a plump turkey pet for doing that if you haven't done that yet. There's also the Frightened Bush Chicken available from the Pilgrim's Bounty Rewards that you can get. This is the sit down at a table and get your rep gains increased by 10% for one hour with the spirit of sharing. That's something you're trying to get as well as get some more reputation buffs out there for folks. Yeah, in general, it's uh, it's pretty neat. There are bountiful tables inside of Dornigal. If you're someone who is curious what the you know yellow quest markers are on your map inside Dornigal, if you've completed all the quests in that area, they are stuff for Pilgrim's Bounty. So feel free to pick those up. And, uh, and get that done for, for this go around. And yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah, not like the biggest or most exciting holiday. No. And it's only a week long, but you know, it, it is what it is. It's cool. If, you, if you've never done it, you should do it once. Get your achievements and stuff and get the cosmetics. And I, I mentioned it before, but the turkey shooter is one of the coolest toys. So you do want to try to get that if you never got it. But at least, you know, the nice thing is in recent years, they've been putting the tables in the you know modern expansion yeah, cities yeah. so you don't have to go all the way back to stormwind or whatever you know go all the way back to old world to do the basic stuff for the event you know or, or even if, if you want to get the buff or whatever like you can just go do it wherever you're probably already playing so that's not i don't know why they didn't do that over the years but i'm glad yeah. that's sort of a that seems to be a focus going forward so that's nice um the spirit of sharing buff does stack with the anniversary stuff. So, you know, you can get that little extra bit on top. I, I feel like 
especially if you have mentors, like, I don't know, man, leveling is so fast. You don't even really think about XP even yeah. without these buffs. And so, Hey, if you want to, if you want to min max and stack up every buff you could possibly get, then you can go get your, you know, get, get your anniversary buff, get the extra 10% for doing the repeatable, get your spirit of sharing and, you know, go nuts. And then when Pilgrim's Bounty ends, Dark Moon Fair starts, and you can just get that that 10% right back. So That's right. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we got Dark Moon Fair kicking off on Sunday and running for the week up until December 7th. So if you want to get yourself that extra precious knowledge points from Dark Moon Fair, you can do that, as well as the reputation and experience gain from riding either the Griffin or the, uh, the, the Merit Carousel, the carousel that's there. You can do that. I want to say merry go around for a second, which kind of is the same thing. Uh, and then the, uh, of course, races, the race is there. If you want to get some achievement stuff done, if you want to get some tokens for buying up the uh, dirigible, things like that, you can get that. There's the achievement for doing all of the dance dance revolution stuff that they put in recently. There's the fish that you can fish up that's massive mana regen and, and health regen. If that's something you're, you want for prog or mythic plus or whatever it is you're working on, shave those extra few seconds off. You can get that. Those fish can also be turned in for more dark moon fair tokens. So if you're someone who really wants to farm a lot of them, then you can do that too. They tend to sell well too. If you're looking to, to actually gather up some fish for selling on the market, you can do that. So dark moon fair is kicking off. Be sure you're taking advantage of all the dark moon fair things while it's happening. Okay. Hot fixes for this past week and a bit that we got. Uh, so there is a, a good ch healthy chunk of stuff here. We did have a lot of class adjustments that went in. Most notably, Blood DKs got themselves uh, a developer note saying the tuning updates done to Deathbringer Hero Talent Tree at the beginning of the patch have notably affected Blood's output more than Frost. The damage effects of the Keystone and the Capstone talents are being increased to match, to, sorry, to make Deathbringer a more competitive choice again. So they are given a 25% buff across those talents, which is a very nice thing for all of those blood DKs out there. But they're also, for Frost, looking in, in looking to increase Frost's single target damage while bringing down their AoE damage to help create a healthier damage profile. I like how they say that. So Breath of Cinder goes to damage nerf by 10%. However, Obliterate and Frost Strike got buffed by 12% to sort of try and even them out a bit more. It's such a dangerous thing to play with because there's such a like meta class at the moment. Although with these changes, I will say I've seen a lot of Death Knights swap over to Unholy who have massive AoE damage as well. So uh, Death Knight's in a good place. I've just put it out there. They're they're in a good place, generally speaking. All three specs are, uh, are definitely healthy ones. Um, Druid, we are Swift Mend for Resto Druids, got buffed by 25%, helping those healers out that chunk more with that extra impact of actually casting swift men on things which you should be doing pretty much on cooldown because it activates like everything on your skill your uh your tier set so it's certainly a a powerful thing for folks to hop into with that also we saw some feral druid buffs uh we got a developer's note here for survival hunters saying survival has lost a lot of its success with its 11.05 update to merciless bow uh, blow uh, in co concert with pack leaders bleed synergies we're adjusting it slightly to ensure the build is still competitive but not quite as dominant so merciless blow damage reduced by 15 percent however the uh vicious pack damage uh for vicious hunt was also reduced by 20 percent so um yeah it's had a lot of its success from that 11 out of 5 update and they're just bringing it back in line so survival hunters getting a little bit I guess a little bit of a nerf there. Yeah. Like, hey, a couple of people finally wanted to play survival. So let's tamp that let's right back down. Let's tamp it right back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They did say that uh, for Beast Mastery Hunters, Ichthic Colossuses are a bit less large when tamed, which I also appreciate because I have seen a few of these things that are like the size of a building walking around. I appreciate it as a non Beast Mastery Hunter, but if I was a Beast Mastery Hunter, I would not appreciate this because if you tame a Colossus, you want it to be quite large. So. But yeah, uh, you know, sometimes the stuff with pets, like we've seen it over the years, it just gets a little Dude, ridiculous. the rumble, the, you know? the core hound yeah. rumble. Oh my God. You have like yeah. four hunters walking through Iron Forge and it's like, grr, 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 grr. like yeah, what it's is going on? Like a big, a big gnarly pet, but other people yeah. do have to play the game too. So yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I get it. As far as mages, your development note was Frostfire is still underperforming for both Frost and Fire. We're targeting both. Uh, targeting buffs to Frostfire's various procs and providing a more substantial 
throughput buff via Fire Mastery's haste value. So in Fire Mastery, they said Fire has been underperforming in single target and could use some help rather than distribute this bonus through a myriad of spells where opting to put most of our budget into Pyroblast to ensure this spell is keeping pace with the rest of Fire's kit. And so you got yourself some fairly broad buffs, but Pyroblast got an 8% buff and Meteor Direct Damage, the Direct Damage from Meteor got a 25% buff from that. So yeah, uh, Frostfire getting a little bit more tweaks to sort of make it a little bit more relevant again. I know that there were some mages in my group a week and a half ago that were complaining about having to, to not be able to play Frostfire. So I'm glad that that's... Uh, that's getting a buff in there. Windwalkers, you folks, holy man. Developer note, we're looking to increase Windwalkers overall perfor performance in AOE and single target through targeted adjustments to a few baseline spells. These are massive adjustments, uh, as well as push some underrepresented talents for build, diver build diversity. So Conduit of the Celestials, the strength of the, uh, the Black Ox, as well as the Flight of the Red Crane, both got 100% damage increases. They doubled the damage of these things. Courage of the White Tiger, 35% damage increase. Fist of Fury, 20% damage increase. Blackout Kick, 8%. Flurry of Zuyen, 40%. Courageous Impulse now increases the damage of your next Blackout Kick by 200%, up from 125. Shadow Boxing Treads now increase the damage of Blackout Kick by 20%, up from 10 and additional Blackout Kicks by at 80% effectiveness as opposed to 70% effectiveness. Uh, man, Mistweavers even? Courage of the White Tiger damage increased by 35%. Let's just let's just throw that towards Mistweavers as well. It is very nice to see these buffs to Windwalker. They will definitely be noticeable. And as we are heading into Queen, where a Mistwalker currently, FYI Blizzard, is required because you actually need the Ring of Peace because it's the only way to actually move things in that last phase that you need to move. Uh, it is it is something that maybe you should look into. This is this is definitely nice to, uh, to see happen because we are going to have to bring in someone's Windwalker alt to actually just do Ring of Peace when we need them to as we move into that boss. So hopefully they, they adjust some things and, you know, let other classes have a useful role in that situation. Okay, now... As we move through this, we did see some changes to Production Paladin and Holy Priest. These aren't massive. The Holy Priest, Holy Word, Serenity, and Sanctify did get healing increased by 25%, so that is nice for Holy Priest, getting that buff up there. Elemental Shamans, you folks uh, are getting yourself some buffs. I, I guess they're trying to bring you a little bit more in line with the other Shaman specs. I will say I'm confused by this. Because Shaman is the class that needs the least amount of attention at the moment, other than reducing things. And they just seem to keep increasing right. things. I'm just putting it out there. It, it is weird. It seems, I mean, yeah, it seems like Shaman is just kind of OP in, yep. in many Every regards. scenario? I mean, yeah. granted, I have sort of, I have some uh, bias in that regard because I, m mostly the people that I play with who play shaman are very high skill at the specs that they're playing. So like, of course they're going to perform high, but also like, it just seems like shaman is very strong right now. It and is. then they kind of keep like, they'll, they'll trim parts of it back, but then just make the class stronger overall sometimes. Yeah. Like it's, um, yeah, it's a little, it seems a little curious. It's a little curious. I can say that much. We do know that as far as enhancement goes, they are reducing the power of maelstrom weapon spenders by 8%. So we are seeing that there's a a, a minor nerf. To there's like an this. upper bound for like this how good like, a shaman spec can be, and then, then they have to walk that back. So it, we know there's a, there's a ceiling somewhere. It's it, I, I, no other class is at this ceiling. Enhancement shaman does things that no other class can even get close to doing, and that is very evident in all of the data that's out there. So it's very strange to see changes happening that help shaman. Where they're like, hey, yeah, we know that you're a melee class and you do 20% more damage than the next class when played well. Um, we're going to reduce you by 8%. You're like, okay, are you buffing everyone else by 10%? No. Okay, well, well, how, why? What? How? What? So yeah, they, they basically are now saying, hey, as far as elemental shamans go, your chain lightning damage from ancestors is increased by 30%. Your Lava Burst damage from Ancestors increased by 15%. Your Latent Wisdom is now up by 5% from where it was. Your Routine Communication 
now has an 8% chance to trigger up from 5%. And the Maelstrom, Maelstrom Supremacy now increases the damage of Earthshock up by another 7%, as well as Elemental Blast and Earthquake. So yeah, that's just buffs for them. And then while they're at it, they buffed Resto Shaman damage because Resto Shamans need more damage inside Mythic Plus, apparently. Yeah, it's uh, it's a crazy thing. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why we haven't just seen like consistent progressive nerfs to enhancement as well as elemental and resto like just like steadily five percent down each week over the past three or four weeks to sort of get them until it stuff starts to look right um now i say this but i don't actually like that th this is me shooting myself in the foot because i know that's what's best for the health of the overall game and player base it's not best for my raid team we have two right, yeah. restoration shamans so they're i'm thrilled <laughs> that they're going to do more damage and we yeah, have an I elemental don't want you shaman. To touch my shamans, yeah, my, but, you, yep. you know, yeah, leave them alone. We but. have we have an enhancement shaman who was played by someone who literally switched to enhancement because it was so broken that he's right. like, well, I was I was considering doing Windwalker. I was considering playing, you know, the spec that I normally play, which was Mage, which is what he started off the expansion as. But I'm going to go enhancement because it just looks really broken and it just has been consistently broken. So I'm happy that you know. It, you guys just take your time. Give me another three weeks before you actually get in here and fix this stuff. Cause then we'll get the raid dead and that'll feel really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got to take advantage of it is really what it comes down to. I, I, I think so. what's weird is like the constant kind of tweaking and like they will, you know, they'll hit Shaman with some nerfs and then, and, but then they'll go back and, and rebuff different parts of the class or the various specs. I, I would I would kind of understand more if they just sort of left it where it was and just kind of slowly crept other specs and other classes. That's up what a I would bit, thought they you know, would more do more consistently. Yeah, but instead, it's, yeah, it's, I, I don't know. It just seems like they're they're always turning so many tuning knobs. Like this is the first tuning pass that we've seen that came through this week in I don't know a good three four weeks at least. Um, so they kind of they didn't do too much of this in in recent weeks, but then this was a huge one this week. So I you know I don't it, it's hard to get a handle on like what. They want a big a big uh, focus of this overall pass seemed to be paying some attention to underperforming or like underpicked hero talents. I, I, that, that seems to be a running theme for a lot of classes. So, which kind of makes sense. I mean, you know, you want to you want to have choices be compelling, and you want to have you want to be able to cater to different play styles. Yeah, so, I, yeah. I think that was like one of the bigger overarching kind of themes here. Yeah. Uh, in Warriors, your dev note is Colossus Warriors are meant to be innately tough and hard to kill. So we're increasing their overall resilience, which is not the actual stat. That doesn't, it's not a thing in the game. It's just, they're just, they mean the word resilience. This is particularly aimed at helping the, the level, at helping level the field between Mountain Thane and Colossus for protection warriors. The passive resistance for Colossus versus Mountain Thane, uh, Thane's more active mitigation playstyle. So we saw... The Mountain of Muscles and Scars damage reduction buffed by 2.5%. They doubled it. And the uh, Dominance of the Colossus now causes enemy damage uh, by Demolish to deal 10% less, up from 5%. So doubling that, that's for arms. And then again for uh, doing the same thing for protection. So both arms and protection are seeing that change to help them out with the, uh, the Mountain Thane versus Colossus decisions that people are making. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. But for me, like, there really is no decision. I just want to play Thane. I don't really see any compelling reason not to play Thane. Like, this is cool, I guess, but I don't want to play Colossus. I don't what? I don't think it's, like, cool from a fantasy That's, perspective. I was going to say, that, that they you shot know? themselves in the foot by going, we mm -hmm. want to engage players with more class fantasy <laughs> and make them, make them really make decisions about the class fantasy they're playing because there are people like you who are like, dude, I'm a mountain thing. That's what this mm -hmm. is. That's what I play. That is the thing. Yeah. I'm not going to switch off of it. It is. It is what it is. Like, yeah. yeah, thing is just it's too cool. It's too fun. You know, the lightning strikes and all that, and also the lack of a new active button. I don't want to manage demolish. I played with it a little bit, and I was like, yeah, I see what's going on here, but I don't like this. I just, I just want to sometimes do thunderclaps that are way better and just blast lightning all right. over the screen. Like yeah. that's what I want to do. So, yeah. I mean, if it gets to a point where they really, you know, shine up Colossus and I'm doing myself a disservice by not playing it, then, you know, I'll consider it. But generally, man, I just like I'm very happy with Thane and I think it's fun to play. It's pretty useful in all situations. Um, I don't really have any plans to experiment with this. I mean, these are nice buffs, but it's not like they're 
incredible beyond a certain point as like a super high gear tank how much is this really going to make a difference in terms mm -hmm. of my survivability you know we're talking about pretty small numbers here once you get up to the point where you have so much stam and passive armor and just throughput for keeping your active mitigation up and everything um like i get why colossus is lagging behind in in a lot of ways because it's just not as cool to play it, like at least for for prot i can't really i can't speak to arms because i haven't messed with it at all but you know for me there's just there's just no comparison here colossus is not a cool fantasy and it adds more complication to an already complicated play style in terms of the active ability so i'm just gonna stick with my lightning and i'm perfectly happy with that i don't i don't want a choice there really i just want fane to to feel as good as it's as it looks you know mm -hmm. for it to for it to be as viable as it is cool and as long as it sure. stays that way then i'm happy i don't i don't really need to make those kind of granular choices to, uh, about every single approach i take to the game i yeah, just want to play stuff that's cool it's i mean I, I can also see it from the colossus point of view if they just want the same thing there's gonna be players out there who just want the same thing for colossus and it is what it is so i, I i'm glad they're adjusting and tweaking it it's just funny to me because if they are basing their decisions around oh well we need to change this because so few players are engaging in the spec recognize guys that mountain thane is just cool and it might be that people just like mountain thane more because they like the fantasy of it because you sold them on the fantasy of it like that just that just is a thing like it's possible i don't, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with that either yeah, yeah. there's not like, I think it's there's fine. nothing there's nothing to fix there it's just an, it's an interesting thing to me of like it makes their data analysis that much more difficult to do because you have to like factor in of like, well, how many people are playing this or not playing the spec just because the other one is the one that they think is cooler as far as class fantasy goes. <laughs> like that makes it hard to read that data because it's no longer about, oh, I'll just play the talents that are the best talents or I'll just play the spec that's the best spec. For a lot of players, it's I play the thing that's fun or I play the thing that resonates with me. And now it's like, yeah, class fantasy is a big factor of hero talents and how hero talents work. All right, time walking. Uh, the weekly time walking quests now require a level 30 to drop item rewards. So players who are level 10 to 29 are still able to engage with time walking. However, we do not want to incentivize creating a character for one run and then deleting the character. Um, I don't know what abuse was taking place here, but there was clearly some abuse happening, which is why they are getting rid of that. So yeah, that's the thing. Uh, did you know anything about this? I, I don't, I really don't like, I can't put this into context. I mean, is it like, I, 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 I have no insight into what people were doing to kind of abuse this. Uh, like, okay. Is it, is it because could you do the, well, no, it says we, well, I wonder if the raid quest is a weekly is that considered the weekly quest? I'm just thinking of the run five dungeons or, or kill five bosses. Yeah. But if the disturbance detected is considered a weekly time walking quest, then you could theoretically just make like a character level it up to 10 and then go kill Yogg and try to get, you know, invincible out of the box. And then if that doesn't work, then you just do oh, it again. Oh, I hear what you're saying. Right? I hear what you're saying. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I don't that's know possible. that that quest counts yeah. as a weekly time walking quest. But I, I can't see any advantage of doing that for the run five or kill five bosses for a I'm gear item. I'm pretty sure like, you have to be max level to do that, too. Yeah, like it's... I th yeah, I think so. Or, uh, I mean, I, so maybe you could do Disturbance Detected at lower level or something. Uh, and maybe that is considered a weekly time walking quest. Um, yeah. Or maybe it's from the, the, um, the classic time walking that's up as part of the anniversary every week. Uh, but again, like, I don't really know what the advantage would be to deleting the character after completing a run. I don't a, know. It's if, a weird thing. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. anyways, they, they've, they've made it so you don't get loot. So if you're, you're running, you know, the weekly time walking quest and you're not getting rewards but up to level 29, that's why. Um, apparently someone is a bad apple and they've ruined it for the bunch. And that just is what it is now. All right. Wow's anniversary event. Uh, we now have package time walking badges for folks who are looking to buy time walking badges with bronze in an easier format than one at a time, which is great. So I'm glad that that exists now. Uh, we also saw the underwater gnomes have been removed, uh, have removed their elevator for repairs indefinitely. So yes, no, no more underwater gnome elevator situation going on. 
Uh, we know that with Rat's Revenge, they fixed a bunch of things. I don't want to spoil any of this quest stuff, but yes, they they have fixed a bunch of things with that for folks that might have been struggling with it. And they made several adjustments to the guest relations and Rat's Revenge uh, overall stuff. So like six additional pets are now considered secret pets. Uh, they now have a spirit of collection that's accepting you know more things. The uh, the treasure of the wardens can now be looted by any party member. They've just sort of added a bunch of things in just to make this quest stuff feel better. So if you're someone who is struggling with that, that should feel better around the anniversary event. I know Robin today apparently finished everything. She's got every achievement for the anniversary event done before I do. So she nice. went ham and got through all of that, which is wicked. So I need to I need to pick it up, man, and get in there and, and do some more Chivos. Because she was like, she's do, she's done the PvP one. She's done all of it. So she's uh, she knocked that oh, all out. Nice. I know, right? I did like all the stuff I care about so far, but I only did the first couple days of the guest relations quest line. And yeah. I really got to I got to catch up too. I mean, we got time, right? Like it's going to yep. be around until early January, yep. but I got a couple weeks I, of I, vacation coming up. Um, I could dig into it then. Yep. Yeah. I kind of want to sit down and do like a huge chunk of it at once and keep some continuity going through like the storyline right, instead of doing like one piece a day or whatever. So yeah, um, yeah I'll probably, I, I might mess around with that a bit th over the holiday weekend, this weekend or something. I, I really like this kind of stuff. Like I enjoyed secrets of Azeroth a lot when they ran that during Dragonflight. I thought it was a cool way to just inject some different kinds of gameplay into a while. Um, so I'm definitely like, I'm planning to do it and I want to check in on it. I just, it just hasn't been a priority and I've been really busy. So I'm, I'm like three or four weeks behind on it right now, but we'll get there. I do like the fact that, you know, if you have a ton of bronze celebration tokens to cash in, you can get those, the, the, you know, the box that costs 25 or whatever. And instead of having to buy individual bags, that was a really nice addition this past week because I'm done with bronze celebration tokens. I got all my tier twos. I got all the pets and toys and mogs from the from the vendor. So I'm just cashing them out for badges at this point and not having to buy 89 individual bags of badges is a huge upgrade. So thank you for that one. It's like, oh, I have 89 badges. I can just buy three of the 25 yep. token boxes yep. and I'm almost cashed out already. Yeah, it's definitely nice to get that in there for folks to save them a bit of time and a bit of agony when it comes to that or the only other way to, to fix it would have been to have a shift click to buy a certain amount of one cost bags thing to do it which then fills your inventory with bags which you then have to open so this is just a much better experience so yeah all right actions taken to curb griefing by reported by repeatedly leaving groups here is the hot topic that got me revved up last night kyvax came out put out a blue post saying today we issued games gameplay suspensions to players who intentionally left mythic plus dungeon groups a great many times, I'm going to highlight that, in The War Within Season 1, the sort of behavior we actioned was either without regard for the experience of their fellow players, or even in some cases, deliberately intending to harm others' experiences. This is a detri this detrimental to the community of players who we strive to, to strive to do their part in group content the vast majority of the time. We understand that occasionally a banning run will happen, Players can experience unexpected real-life emergencies, internet outages, and group collectively deciding to quit a run. Today, we suspended players who repeatedly and recklessly disrupted Mythic Plus keys. We will continue to keep an eye on groups in the future, and repeat offenders are subject to escalating penalties, which I'm also glad to hear. So, everyone's first response to this that I saw, that like there, there wasn't everyone. There were a lot of people who were like, yes, good, thank you, you fixed a massive problem in the game. You're finally addressing this. Thank you, thank you. There was a lot of that. And I want to highlight that because it's important for the devs who are listening to know there is members of the community like myself who support these sorts of actions. <laughs> I'm very pleased you're doing something. To everyone out there who's like, hey, you're this is this is not a preventative measure. You're not solving the reason why people leave groups. You're just, you know, giving something for the symptoms of the problem. Uh, I hear what you're saying, but I'm glad they're doing something and that it has an effect on people's experience in Mythic Plus in a positive way. So celebrate that first and then give your feedback about the other stuff, all right? Just, just give the dev something with this because the two things that came out of this were people asking how many dungeons is you know, that this amount that you're getting, you're getting a, a, what is a great many times, basically, which FYI, they're never going to tell you. You know why? 
because then people will just do it to a certain number and then stop because they know what the cutoff is for their limit of where, how much of a jerk they can be doing dungeons. That's what people do when you give them a number. So they can't give you a number, okay? Uh, they also were like, what if you, you know, decide to quit a group as a run, uh, uh, quit a group, quit as a group from a run? Or what if you have an internet outage or real life, whatever? They address that in this post. If you read far enough into this post, which is only like five sentences, you will... <laughs> see that they directly address that that's not a thing. So if people collectively choose to leave, it means that whatever tracking system they have is clearly tracking when people choose to leave, probably what's said in chat, because the fact that they could say that even deliberately intending to harm others' experiences, that tells me that people probably were leaving runs and being quite mean inside of chat, which means that there's very clear as to why they are punished. They're, they're choosing to punish players in their group. Right. It's, it's weird to me that people could not just celebrate this and that there has to be this other stuff. I understand the curiosity. If you're curious about how this system works, I am too. I think it's really neat to get dev insights on things, but I recognize the danger of giving you numbers because numbers let people like be jerks about the fact that there's numbers. Yeah. Oh yeah. They can't, they can't, you know, pull the curtain back on this Yeah. because then, yeah. Like, I mean, like you said, people would just game it. They'd like, okay. I can leave groups 49 times. Yeah. This is run number yeah. 47. I can leave this one. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, obviously they log everything. They have so much data about player behavior. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that there might be some, there, there always tends to be, you know, some people who maybe get caught in a net like this that shouldn't have been. And, you know, hopefully there's some kind of an appeal process or something, but in general, I think this is great because, there's there's a social contract around running mythic plus especially yep. pugging or whatever playing yep. with players you're not familiar with and if there's really no downside to you as a player just saying well you know what i don't want to play with these people i changed my mind i'm out of here i'm you know especially as a tank or a healer who gets a fast queue right you, you could be yeah, looking like, you could be looking at a shadow priest or a boomkin or something who spent like an hour trying to get into a mythic plus group and they finally yeah. get into one and you get to the first boss and there's a wipe before the first boss and someone goes, screw it. It's not worth it. I'm not going to get this thing timed anyways. I'm gone. And the tank leaves because they know they can get into another group in five yeah. seconds. Right. And now everyone else in that group, not only is that, let's say it's a plus 10 key, is that key now burnt and they have to push that back up to 10, yep. which is another 40 minutes of their life to be able to do that so that they can actually run the 10 because maybe they wanted a vault reward out of the whole thing or maybe they wanted the loot off the last boss or maybe they wanted the... Uh, badges that you get, the Gilded Crest that you get out of it. Like maybe they wanted any of those things and you've decided that, yeah, just because you can ditch the group and get a new queue in five seconds, what's the big deal, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, and that's, you know, obviously that's, uh, that happens all the time in there. So I think, I think it's good. I mean, yeah, I guess you could make the argument that, well, the real problem is that the timers are too restrictive or the game's too hard or the scaling's not fair or the level seven affix leads to toxic behavior because the, it doesn't let you recover from it fast enough. I mean, I, you know, I, you could maybe try to make a case for that. I think that mythic plus is supposed to be hard. It offers some of the best rewards available in the game. So I think that they want the challenge level to be around a certain place. Um, I think it's fair to say that they probably overshot the overall challenge level very early this season, but I think Mythic Plus has been feeling pretty good for what it it yields for weeks now. Yeah. Um, I mean, just in my personal experience, uh, you know, and I've I've been I've had a full vault every single week of the season. I've I've been you know uh, through thick and thin with it. When yeah, the first couple of weeks were rough out of the gate. They always are. You're gearing up. You're learning the dungeons, and they're tuning it. Like this is ev the beginning of every season. Um, but you know, people expect to kind of have those concerns addressed immediately. And I don't think it was possible for them to do that because they just needed more information. Well, uh, the affixes were brand new. The dungeon pool is brand new and everybody's low gear, low power. You know, it's just, if they they weren't going to just snap fix the entire tuning landscape after one or two weeks of mythic plus. Sure. So, and, 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 and I agree that we could focus on, Hey, here's the things that blizzard could do better with mythic plus. There's lots of feedback about that and lots of places to do it. This post is specifically about, hey, we're trying to make the community a better experience for your average player. 
by removing individuals who are abusive in this situation. And like, in their words, recklessly and repeatedly disrupting other players' experiences in the game. Like yeah. that's 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 what they have experienced and are witnessing on their end and are trying to prevent. And so like, sure, there's other things Blizzard could do with Mythic Plus. I, I, I don't even want to have that conversation now because it's a massive conversation we keep into. It's not worth it. This conversation should be focused yeah. around what we're doing with with the, the bands and what's happening with the bands in the situation. In my opinion, if you're someone who, you know, got targeted by this in some weird way, obviously there's an appeal process for bands and what's happening with it. Obviously they're not permanent bands. These aren't because they specifically say repeat offenders are subject to escalating penalties. So these probably started yeah. out as 24 hour <laughs> bands, right? So if it you sort keep of implies doing it, that there's like, right? yeah, you're going to come back and then potentially be punished again. Exactly. Yeah, so that's so, implicit in the post. Yeah. So it, it's a case where, yes, people might've gotten a 24 hour ban in these situations. And sure, you could appeal that ban if you want to and have it removed from your record if it gets all cleared and everything's good. But these were all based off of data that Blizzard's been collecting. So they clearly well, like, happened for a reason in some cases. And it might be that, right. sure, early on in the season, a lot of people were banning keys because they were difficult or whatever it was. And you got caught up in something. But I feel like they're probably pretty good at the amount of data and analysis that they have. And they would yeah, not have taken yeah. an action like this without having good reason for the action to take place. So no, and I can't remember ever yeah. them ever doing anything like this before with Mythic Plus. Um, and maybe they should have. You know, I, oh, I sure, think for like sure. yeah, it, you know, up to this point, and Mythic Plus has been in the game for over eight years now. The, the consequences have been mostly social and mostly like would you know you'd really need an add on or something. It, it, there's nothing in the game, but you need like the or the Raider IO add on and maybe some other out of game tools to assess like, okay, is this person that I'm pugging with, are they likely to be trustworthy or whatever? Um, you know, that there have been no concrete consequences inside the game client itself up until now for Which, ruining other players experiences. You know I mean? Yeah. You agree to the social contract when you log into the game, whether you yeah. like it or not, if you want to play the game, you're supposed to play fair with the other players. And, um, I, I think like a lot of what we see when a pug mythic plus group falls apart, sort you know, there are definitely bad actors that will violate that kind of agreement that everybody else is assuming that they're playing under. Right. That like, yeah. okay. And I mean, you can, you can set forth, you know, what your intention, intention when is you yep. use the group start, finder, start like your own just key. completed yep. or whatever, you know, yep. if you sign up for a key that's listed for completion yep. and you don't time it, well, you know, you are violating the trust of the other people in the group if you bounce because you're not going to time it. Yeah. And, right? and, like and to you, be clear, you signed up to complete the key. Yeah. To be clear, when a key is posted, unless it says completion in time or in time or whatever it is, you're making the assumption that key is to be completed. If you just see plus 11 and it's a Grim Batol, their assumption is we are finishing this key. And, and that is the assumption for both the person who has the key and the people joining that group. That's an equal agreement across the board with everyone. And I will make it really clear. I can't think of another game that has a queue system where when you abandon a group that actively punishes and costs people time, there is not a consequence for doing so. I, I, like they all have it. Yeah. They all have true. it. And, and WoW has it in other parts of the game, too. Yeah. It's just in match-made stuff, not in, you know, kind of player-constructed groups. Yeah, and and in those situations, like, we see, hey, you can't participate in Battlegrounds for the next 15 minutes, and that buff will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger the more often you do it. I I, I honestly think that buff should be account-wide. I'm just saying it should be something where you can't just swap characters and then do something on a different character. That I, I do think that should be changed. Now that we have Warbands, maybe they can make that happen. But it's something to me where... Yeah, I, I can't think of another game where that happens. And the commitment that you make when you join a key is to finish the key. I, I've never understood people who are like, I, I've, I've had this happen, literally. I was doing a City of Threads with four guildies and one pug, and the pug was a, a holy paladin. And we got to the last boss in City of Threads with two minutes left, and the holy paladin left. And they stated, we're not going to finish this in time, and left the group. And now I was able to step out of the dungeon, switch into Resto Spec, and we four manned that boss because we are a guild group and organized and can pull that off. But talk about rude and offensive. And in any other situation with most groups, that just kills the group. You've just wasted everyone's time. We're at the last boss. If we killed that boss, we would have killed it within a minute of the timer. Maybe people would have gotten rating increases 
We would have gotten loot. We would have gotten Gilded Crests. All those things would have happened. And you just made a decision to just ditch. Like literally stayed for three more minutes and we would have killed that boss and it would have been fine. But you didn't. You just chose to ditch. So like that to me is a behavior that deserves punishment. It just does. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if it's if it's if it's a persistent thing, and you know, if they have, they can they have data like showing that. I mean, it's not it's not merely up to the community of players to you know enforce social consequences Agreed. on you because people yeah. don't have the information. Yeah. They don't know that, that you know you're likely to do that. You know, so I don't know. I I I think maybe. If anything, uh, now granted, I'm somebody who I pug, I pug, I mean, if you listen to the show, you know, I pug dungeons basically never. I, yeah. I play with people that I know and trust and enjoy playing with for better or for worse. And sometimes we have good runs and sometimes we have bad runs, but we have them together. We we have the ups and downs. We, we learn stuff. We learn how to play together. We learn how to approach the keys, whatever. To me, that's what's fun about it, right? Um, I don't, I don't pug a lot, but I feel like this is a long time coming. I, I feel like they should have started doing this years ago and just kind of put people on notice. Like, yeah. If you're going to routinely tank people's keys because of whatever you're, you know, I mean, they, they describe it as griefing in the headline of the post. And that's really what it is. You know, you're, yeah. you're ruining potentially four other players gameplay experience because of your own selfishness is really what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a group exercise. It's a competitive video game. It's not about being selfish. And if you decide that your time should be spent better elsewhere uh, to the detriment of, of these other four people, like, that isn't fair, and I, I think it's fair game for Blizzard to collect data on that and punish the behavior. Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, the only thing to mention about 11.0.7 uh, is that we Worgens are getting themselves a Dark Flight cooldown reduction by half a minute, so that'll be fun for a little bit of more speed boost happening more often. I still think that should be a one-minute cooldown, but we'll see what they choose to do with it. It's getting there. I mean, it's hey, getting there. We, yeah. we're getting some big buffs to Dark Flight, baby. It's, 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 it's all happening. You can stack it up now, and now it's only 90 seconds. It's so. true. Yep. It's getting there. It's getting there. All right, and then last but not least, let's talk a little bit about the December trading post because it is happening before we record next, most likely, because uh, it's kicking off on Sunday this week, and I don't think we're going to record before Sunday. So for folks who are interested in this, we are going to have the Frosty Finds of December kicking off here with the Reigns of the Twilight Sky Prowler, a flying purple fox mount, which I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in, as well as the Wings of the Sapphire Monarch and the Frost Wolf Earmuffs. I will say the Frost Wolf Earmuffs are awesome. I characters. think they're a must. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty cool, man. Yeah. The, uh, the Aegis of the Yuletide is a pretty wicked shield that you can get, as well as the Cheerbringer XL, which is a large two-handed mace that basically hits people with presents that is that is what the mace head is it's pretty funny looking cool yeah looking. i mean they're obviously like heavily winter veil themed stuff yeah. um yeah this post came out like right before we were gonna kind of get the show going today and they haven't done the traditional like full rundown of the entire like vendor inventory for the month so we don't know that right now as we're speaking but yeah um yeah i mean some some decently cool stuff uh i, I the earmuffs look really cool actually i think i'm gonna have to get those and i i winter veil isn't really my overall aesthetic for my tune so i may be out on the weapons but, but jason it, if you want to hit somebody with a, a mace made of presence though this is your month this is your month the monthly reward is a purple and blue Murloc ensemble outfit. You literally get to, they're giving everyone who finishes the monthly reward for December a full Murloc costume. So everyone can be a purple Murloc if they want to. I expect raid teams to be purple Murloc teams. I expect all sorts of silliness to happen with this. I'm excited about this monthly reward. I think this is one of the better ones that we've seen. It's I'm really glad good. it's not the Fox mount because if it was the Fox mount, <laughs> then we would see this ensemble for like 1,250 points yeah. or something ridiculous. You have to be so, dropping a bunch of tender yeah, for it, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, now, you know, it's all perspective. Uh, I think this is great. I love it as a monthly reward. Yeah. And it's it's fun and it's funny. Um, I mean, there are people who basically just complain about every bonus reward if it's not a mount. True. Like uh, mounts, you know, for a lot of people, they play this game essentially to collect mounts. And I just do not live my life like that. I do not have the mount collector disease and I don't 
really i don't see everything through the lens of how do i get a mount out of this you know and um i feel like those people are the loudest when it comes to the bonus rewards i like when they mix it up and we get something a little different every time you know we had now this is two months in a row of stuff that goes on your character because we had the the war three back pieces for november but i mean you know we knew that was coming you, you had to do something for warcraft 30 and everything for this month so you know i i get that and uh, this is, you know, this is more transmog. It's a full transmog set, though. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I um, I like it. I, I don't think I... I'm trying to remember. There was the green one that was on the cash shop, right? And I don't think I bought yeah. that. Yeah, uh, it was the green one. It, it was... It's cool, but I... I kind of like the green one better, but I the purple one being free for playing the game is way more up my I alley, so I like that. Um, there is, they, act, they also did put a note in that um they are also doing the extra 500 traders tender this month love it so you can go love beyond it. the 1000 again like you get the that permanent make 1, it permanent make it yeah make it literally a permanent thing mm -hmm. where when players who want to just get the rewards for the month that they can get and and they're not going to play the game much outside of that can get the rewards for the month that they want to get and be done and if that's all they accomplish that month because that's all they want to do perfect done if you're a player who plays the game on a regular basis this is a way of rewarding those players in a in a meaningful way for them that doesn't punish other players in a dramatic way. You're not yeah. punishing anyone by giving people more tender that they can do for just playing the game more. And I think that's great. It doesn't feel like you have to do it. And it's something where, hey, yeah, if, if you know, I, I finish my tender stuff in a week because I'm doing raiding and Mythic Plus and events and the holiday stuff and like all that sort of stuff happening... This means that, yeah, I actually get to earn 500 more tender. And when we have really nice months, like last month was, roll around, mm -hmm. we can buy up everything we want to buy. And you're like, great, perfect. Yeah. Or, or buy up a lot of it and then freeze something or whatever it is and continue saving more tender. Because at this point, there's like tens of thousands of rewards in tender that are out there. <laughs> right. yeah. And, you know, it's nice to actually have a way of starting to creep back into buying the stuff you want to buy when it rolls back around. Yeah, and they're always adding stuff, and then old stuff is coming back. Yeah. And, you know, it's a lot for sure. Yeah, I think it's great. I hope I hope they keep doing it every month. This is two months in a row of it, and hopefully, it's just a new standard. I would even just expand upon it further, like do an extra five hundred for everybody that only kicks in during final surge or whatever. You yeah. know, like yeah. so that way you have the catch up. If all you're trying to do is get to a thousand, you can do that quick. If you're already maxed out from earlier in the month, then it's just uh, more kind of motivation to get to in, maybe in that do last some week. different yeah. stuff in the game, whatever. Yeah, get cool. get some more. Why, why not? I mean, it really doesn't sure. hurt anything. No, it doesn't. It, it, like, yes, it rewards the more deeply engaged players proportionally more than it rewards the casual players. I don't, I don't really see a problem with that. I pay the same money. I'm in the game doing stuff every week. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I mean... I would max it out because I just max it out by a matter of course anyway, just from my normal WoW routine. So yeah, I think it's great to have that extra bonus in there and it feels nice, you know, because it's uh, like you see that stuff pop up right in your traveler's log as you hit it. And it's like, well, I already maxed out. Like, I yeah. don't get anything for yeah. this. I get the toast, but nothing happens. So exactly. yeah, I, yeah. I get the extra the bonus. And also like this makes me go knowing that we're getting extra 500 makes me go, hmm. What else am I buying this month? Exactly, because I, I I get a feeling I like this month's trading post more than I like next month. Perhaps. So if, if perhaps. next week is like if next month is kind of a save tender month for me, that and I know I'm getting extra five hundred, then you know I can budget accordingly, which exactly. is pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm glad they're doing it. I hope they keep doing it. I hope that just I'm becomes this is how it works. You know, I'm for 2025. You. Yeah. All right, let's take a moment to thank our patrons. They contribute a ton to our show and help us to improve on the content we create. I'm giving a special shout out today to Alianas, Arajian, Bradley, Dustin, James, Kapawi, Max, Shorl, and Rager. Thank you so much for what you give towards the Patreon and the show. And thank you to all of our patrons, both past and present, if you ever have given towards the show. We appreciate you for helping keep us on the air and keep all the archives online and pay all the bills associated with running a podcast on a regular basis and making sure these episodes happen. I know the past two weeks have been a little wonky with stuff releasing a little bit differently than it normally does, but we're settling back in for the winter season without either of us doing massive traveling that could affect something like that. So hopefully we can get some regular episodes out to you again and, uh, and have those recordings out on a regular basis like we normally did. So thank you patrons. If you're someone who wants to become a patron, 
You can go to patreon.com slash the starting zone on your PC and be sure that you're signing up for Patreon. And I say that specifically because if you use the app on either a Google device or an Android device or an uh, Apple device, whatever it is, the apps companies are now taking 30%, man. They are, they are adding 30% onto the cost of being a patron if you actually sign up through their app. So just go to a computer and do it through your computer. You can even go to the startingzone.com. There's a patron link on that website and click on that and sign up through the web. And that way you are not dealing with spending more money that we don't even get to see. It just goes to the greedy app people. So, you know, definitely don't do that. Yeah, that's not just us. That's any it's any every, Patreon yeah. campaign that you may support. Like, yeah. yeah, I make sure I always just sign up straight through the web. Um, just a good general life tip for anybody who is a user of the you know the patreon service but um yes thank you all for your support so much it, it means a lot it helps keep the show on track and thank you for your patience as we had sort of this delayed i uh, i don't know even what to call it just this, this unusual kind of gap between yes, episodes that, that happened um yeah we we appreciate your patience and you know i mean if you've followed the show for a long time you know we don't usually let it go very much longer than than a week so yeah you know i, I wouldn't expect that we'll be too far out of that realm in in the near future here exactly so, but thank you all for for keeping us you know on track and keeping the show in production i'm sure you'll expect plenty more action-packed episodes as 11 out of 7 comes creeping up on us in just a few weeks it's 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 soon guys it's three weeks is we'll be in it like yeah just a couple more resets and yep. you know then we'll be in the uh, final patch of of season one and yep. the, you know season two is just a, a, a barreling down the pike as well so yes it is it's gonna be it's gonna be a very busy uh 2025 for wow it seems like yeah all right if you folks have enjoyed this episode another great way to support the show is heading on over to your itunes your apple podcast and leave us those five star reviews we really love reading them and here's one that comes in from roar uh, in the USA, entitled Absolute Best Wow Podcast, says there is no better way to start your wow than with TSE. Keep up the great work, Roar. Thank you so much, Roar, for hopping in and helping us out by bumping us up those charts and helping more people find the show by leaving us those five stars on iTunes. We appreciate it. If you want to leave us a five star, we will read it here on the show and happy to happy to have the support from folks like Roar. Absolutely. Thanks for writing in. Appreciate you. Great to hear from you. And uh, glad you liked the show. And yeah, um, I, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, but we are like on the precipice now of the service we use to aggregate our reviews going away. So yeah. um, I'm going to try to just like probably copy paste what's in there into a notepad for the ones we haven't gotten to yet in case we just like totally lose access to it. Um, if you get them in real soon, they should post there. And then in going forward, we're going to have to figure out where we find them because it is hard to find iTunes reviews by yourself as an individual user, unless you want to click into every single region where iTunes is offered. Yeah, so, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure you know, something just out. A, a disclaimer on that. If something gets kind of lost in the shuffle over the next few weeks here, that is probably why. And uh, we will, we're going to try to do our best to figure out how to proceed with that. Yeah, there's, you know, going there's, forward. there's a lot of back end work that has to be done on TSZ over the next month or so. So we'll be figuring out a few things that will uh, hopefully you might not notice too much on your end, but we'll smooth out things on our end. So hopefully that uh, that keeps us going and keeps everything, everything, you know, happy and, and basically recording the shows we want to record the shows. All right. That's going to wrap up episode 659 of The Starting Zone. If you want to check out. Uh, show notes for this episode or leave us a comment on the show you can head on over to the startingzone.com the official website for the starting zone podcast if you want to leave us an email you can email us at the starting zone at gmail.com and leave your feedback or ask a question things like that you can also ask questions over on our discord server you can get there by going to the startingzone.com slash discord we also have twitter at the starting zone as well as blue sky which is starting zone that b sky whatever it is that's out there so you can find starting zone on blue sky out there as well and if you want to get your hands on some TSE gear, you can find that on tpublic, teepublic.com slash stores slash the starting zone. we got shirts and mugs and stickers and sorts of fun stuff like that. As well as Jason, if folks want to find you on the internet, where can they find you? Best place to find me is over on Twitter. You can find me over there at Shieldwald. And you can also find me on Blue Sky. It's uh, just jlucas.bsky.social over there. So come say hi. It's been picking up some momentum lately and I've sort of been posting at least like 50 50 over there or even maybe a little bit more on blue sky of late yeah. so come say hi a, a lot of a lot of wow twitter is really starting to migrate over there now so that's been that's been fun to kind of yeah. see that start to take off 
Um, you can also find the video channels over at twitch.tv slash shieldwalled and youtube.com slash shieldwalled. They've been very quiet the last like month or so. I've just been, I haven't been in the, the emotional uh, and mental space to be streaming. I'm trying to run raid and, you know, do what I got to do and trying to relax. So streams have been real quiet. I, uh, I'll probably get back into it somewhat soon. Um, but yeah, check them out, you know, just so you can get notified once we, we start, start them back up. I usually stream Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday at 730 Eastern. So come say hi over there as well. Trying to find me, you can find me on Twitter at Spencer underscore Downey over on Blue Sky at Spencer HD dot Blue Sky or uh, twitch.tv slash Spencer HD or youtube.com slash at Spencer HD. And with that, for Jason and myself, we want to say thanks for listening and jobs done.